This company claims they have unlocked the secret of life expectancy. Are they really who they claim to be? Let's hack them and find out. I should point out, you should never hack anything that you don't have permission to. Or otherwise, you might go, actually, you will go to jail. So let's find out the truth. I'm going to start first by scanning their server. Hackers love attack surface, and we can see right away that we have two ports, SSH and a website. So we've been looking at the website right here. And if we go to About Us, we learn that this company is a research and development group determining advancing human health. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're telling the truth. But are you telling the truth? We extend to the general population for volunteered testing. Okay. I wonder who these volunteer people are. And I can't help but notice that they have the file parameter that fetches the about.php page. So straight up, that's the PHP website. And let's go to the research page and we see that indeed it's loading the research.php page and we have a lot of text here. I don't see this research being referenced in any reputable journal, hence drives suspicion. And look, they have loaded the page two times, which is weird. I don't think there is anything else. There's no presence on social media. Maybe this is just a scam. Let's find out. If I play a little bit with this file parameter, it seems really interesting. Maybe their developers did not validate this user input. So if I type dot slash research dot PHP, this means that I'm going to load the research dot PHP file from the current directory which is really equivalent to just research.php. If this is vulnerable, we would see nothing different in terms of the display. And we see indeed nothing. That's really curious. I wonder if this is really vulnerable to local file inclusion. Well, let's try. Let's go to something like dot dot slash dot dot slash, go to the parent directory, a couple of directories up in the hierarchy, and then type etc passwd. Do we have anything? Oh, we have uh, nothing. Let's reload the page and we should see something on our proxy. Yes, here it is. If I try to play with this request a bit more because it seems really interesting, it intrigues me. So instead of etc passwd, maybe I can just verify once more if it's really vulnerable because I, I just want to make sure that this is really vulnerable before wasting too much time on it. If I send this, I would get the content of the about page, which is right here. The ether is a research and development group, blah, blah, blah. Okay, paste that text here to make sure that we have it. And let's go one step further here. And instead of about.php, I'm going to go inside a dummy folder and then go up. This means that we've essentially just fetched about.php. Let's send, and we get indeed the about page. So I'm more confident that this is really vulnerable. But how can we exploit it? Well, we can try to read the source code of this very about.php page. And the way to do this in PHP is simple. I'm going to use PHP wrapper and then use the filter to convert the page's source code into base64 and then print it. And our resource in this case would be nothing but our about.php page. Drum roll and hit send. And what do we have here? Oh, we have nothing. Um, what about research? Dot PHP. Same thing. All right. Maybe there is a filter that looks for some part of this string. If we try uppercase here and uppercase there, maybe a capital O and maybe in filter use a capital L and PHP capital H send. We got nothing. I'm going to look on my sick list downloaded project from GitHub. Copy all these known paths on Linux. These are all interesting paths that we can leverage for our attack. Let's send this to our brute forcer called intruder and place placeholder. And then in the payloads, I'm going to just paste those values and let's start the attack. And look, we have some hits here. Oh, that's interesting. Rylog auth.log, which gives us the um, logs about the users who authenticate. So let's try that on the repeater. Look at that. It seems that the root user is trying to 
authenticate every time. That's interesting. Do you see where this is going? Remember what we found about open ports. We had port SSH open. So this means that if I try SSH the hackerish at my host name, now watch what happens if I refetch the same page. Let's look for the hackerish. And indeed, it is here. It says invalid user, the hackerish. The page is loaded as a PHP file. So can you think of an attack scenario here? Yes, I'm going to inject whatever I want in this area right here. So what happens if I try to authenticate with the user PHP system dollar get the hackerish. So if I add another parameter, this time it's called the hackerish, run the command IT, it should be evaluated by our PHP code and we would see the result in the page. And there it is, the result of our command, which is wwdata, the current user we're running with, hiding in plain sight. And it's time to go inside and see if this company is really telling the truth or not. Let's get a remote prompt on this server. I'm going to generate the code that I want to run on the server, and then I'm going to listen for any incoming requests. And I'm going to trigger that request right here. I just want to make sure that I encode everything correctly and send. And we get a reverse shell back. We don't need to go ahead and parse the logs every time. That's cool. We're essentially inside the server of this company. Now let's look around and see if we can find something about this research they are conducting. First of all, where am I? All right, I'm under the ether.com slash public HTML. And do we have any other files here? Oh, what is this? Log Auditor. This is a Python script that is owned by root. I'm feeling like we're just a step away from revealing this company's secrets. I'm going to see what's inside this file. Whoa, what's this? Seems like a huge blob of base64 encoded data with some obfuscated code, I guess. Hmm. So if I run it, it's asking us which log we want to load. Why not loading the var log auth.log that we've seen in the LFI vulnerability? And yes, we get the output. If I try to run once more and let's give it another file, maybe etc passwd. Why not? Oh, it's saying invalid log. So there is some checks happening on the script that prevents us from using any file. But can we bypass them? I'm going to put something like this and then I'm going to append another command. And this time I'm going to use, uh, let's say, cat this file right here. Maybe the script just looks for something that ends with a valid path of a log file. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we have the content of etc passwd right here. All right, I want to see if I can run this script with elevated privileges. I'm going to run sudo l to see. Oh, seems that I can run the same Python script as root without the need of any password. That's so messed up. Let's uh, point it to our file, which holds the private key. Hit enter. Wow. Look at that, we have the private key of our Evil Sciences user, but unfortunately it's encrypted and I think we need to brute force it. So is there any shortcut to gaining full control on that server without really having to brute force that key? I don't really want to brute force it. So let's try once more, but this time I'm going to attempt to run my arbitrary code. So uh, try with some dummy file and then run ID and then end it with one of these two paths. So our script evaluates our input. Wow, look at that. I was able to run the command ID as root. You know what that means. I'm going to just take that part right here, rerun our script. And instead of ID, can you think of any other way to leverage this? Well, I can simply copy bin bash to maybe temp root and then I'm going to change it to SUID and that's it. I'm going to just append one of those logs and now if I list the content of our temp directory we can indeed see that we have our root script right here. So what I can do now is just run temp root dash p and boom I am root. So if I go to slash root 
I might be able to gain remote access to some interesting files. So if I run strings, which will extract all the printable characters from that file, I have a blob at the end which resembles to a base64 encoded string. So what I can do here is um, echo that and base64 decode it. Ooh, we have what seems to be a timeline here. On October 2017, we have our first batch of volunteers. Look at that. Just three days after conducting the tests, something has gone wrong. Human specimen appears symptomatic, exhibiting dementia, hallucinations, sweating, oh my god, and rapid growth of cannon teeth and nails? The day after that, exposed subjects are dead, cold and attracted to flesh and our blood? Cannibalistic-like behavior detected, oh my god. Hundreds of people have been burned and buried due to the side effects of the ether. The CDC has been suspicious of our testings and they say that no public announcement has been declared. What an evil company. And before you go, don't forget to like and comment and share this video. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. This is all part of an imaginary scenario and I hope you liked this hacking session and you learned something new and you can go yourself and uh, experiment with this very challenge on rootme.org. Just go to CTF all the day, choose a room and then go to the Ether Evil Science Challenge.